In this video, we're going to be going over, uh, well, the fundamentals of motion, which involves vectors and scalars. We're going to be looking at distance versus displacement, as well as average and instantaneous velocity and speed, and average and instantaneous acceleration. Now, these are fundamentals. Some people might call them basics because, you know, that you would imply it's easy, but I mean base as in really important, like everything else builds on this. I put this in here because I thought it was without the Spider-Man <laughs> volume, velocity, voltage, although... In the IB, we don't use voltage, we say PD or potential difference. And viscosity, we're gonna see we don't use a V for that. Actually, we have a different uh, variable for that completely, but oh well, I thought it was funny. So let's get started. First of all, ve vectors versus scalars, what's going on here? Well, first of all, a scalar is a quantity that only has a magnitude. So we're gonna be talking about vectors, which is something different. That is something that has both direction and a magnitude. It's basically an arrow. Okay, so vectors are just arrows, and the arrow has a length, and it has a direction. Whereas you could say a scalar just has a length, but we actually don't care about the direction. So what are the things that we don't care about direction? Well, m, for example, we often use. That's just mass. And remember, that's measured in kilograms. Then we've got t. That's just time. And what's time measured in? Well, you could measure in a lot of things, but we're mostly going to use seconds. Now, S, that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, we're going to talk about, because we've got two different S's and V's here. So this S, this scalar version, is going to be called distance. So just distance here. It's interesting, it's not called D. We use S for distance here, and it's measured in meters. Now, what about uh, V? V is here, it's a speed, in this case right here. So in the scalar version, it's speed. And what are its units? Well, it's in meters per second. Now, how do we write meters per second? We write m and we say s, uh, sometimes seconds to the minus one, sometimes just m s to the minus one, or m seconds to the minus one. All right, now let's look at this one right here. What's the difference? Well, this one right here, we're going to say f is going to be a force. That's something we're going to see in physics a lot, a force. And that's measured in, it's got a few different units. Mostly we use newtons. You can also use a bunch of other things like uh, kilogram, meters per second squared. Let's look at B, for example. B is weird, it's a magnetic field strength. Okay, so I'll write that down, it's a magnetic field strength. We're gonna see that uh, a little bit later on. That's actually a really important one as well. Now, what is it measured in? It's measured in a unit that, well, there's a famous car company that makes electric cars. It's Tesla's. Now, it's named after, actually, <laughs> an actual scientist named Tesla who figured out a lot of this stuff. Uh, but let's keep going. So we've got S. This time the vector version of S is going to be velocity. Uh, no, sorry. That's not velocity, is it? S is going to be displacement. There we go. Uh, okay, so let's write that down. So displacement. And you might think, well, what's the difference? I'm going to explain that in a second. But we have same units. V, this time the vector version is not called speed. It's called velocity. So that's actually the one from the meme up there with the Spider-Man, for example. It's going to be velocity, and it's going to be in meters per second. There we go. And we're going to have A, which is going to be acceleration. And that's going to be in meters per second squared. So we're going to say meters per second squared. That's just how we write it with exponents like this. Right? We say negative exponents. So there we go. Now, what's the difference? What's going on here? Let me show you something important. Vectors get this little arrow. At least uh, when we write it down, we often do this. On exams, you'll usually see these as bold. But it's just important to understand there's a difference. Now, what's the difference between distance and displacement? We're going to talk about that now. So if we look at this one right here, distance versus displacement, what is the difference? Well, I'm just going to write those down again. Remember, that was just uh, D. Uh, well, that's, let's, we'll do uh, distance first. Maybe that'll be the best to do. Distance, remember, that's in meters. And remember, displacement is also in meters. Now, what's the difference? We can see it here. All right, so the difference is distance is just how far you've traveled and I've got an example of that down here so that, that at least hopefully it's gonna make some sense here let me just put this in a box so for example let's look at this to see what the difference is so first let's just talk about distance so first of all you walk let's just assume you walk one meter east let me just try to draw that maybe so I'll draw a little arrow going to the right maybe and I'm going to make sure that it's one meter long because I decided it was. There it is. And east is because that's usually to the right. Okay, then what? 
Well, here, when you're adding vectors or you're adding these arrows, you have to add them head to tail. So the next one, then one meter south, you don't do it from your start point, you do it from here, right? So you say, all right, so one meter south. Okay, then what? Then one meter west, all right. And then finally, crucially, two meters north. That means you go up and then up. So now you've gone up sort of two meters. Okay, so the question is then, what is your distance traveled? In other words, what is your total distance that you went? Well, let's see how far it traveled. You went one plus one plus one plus one plus one. So you could say it's, you know, well, I'll write it like this. So the distance traveled then is just gonna be one plus one plus one. That's your east, then south, then west. And then I'm gonna say two meters north. And what that's gonna be, that's gonna be just plus two. All right, well, two plus one plus one plus one is just five. So I'm gonna say five meters. That means S equals five meters. And there we go. So there we go, there's our distance traveled. Now the difference between that and displacement, hopefully it'll be obvious here, is how far you are from your start point. Well, remember, you started here. Now we don't care about the path you took, we just care about where you finish. Do you see that this one then is very different? because the displacement then is going to be, well, from the start to the finish, where do you finish? You finish one meter north of where you started. So that's why it's gonna be one meter. And maybe we can say north like this. In fact, uh, that should be my final answer. Okay, so displacement then is just one meter. And it's important to say the direction, right? The direction is key. Now on IB exams, you're allowed to also say like, you know, up or left or right or down. And we have a, um, a few conventions that we tend to use. Up is usually positive. Right is usually positive. Down tends to be negative and left tends to be negative. That makes sense to me because we use that for numbers, don't we? Like in mathematics, we use, you know, on a on a graph, for example, you know, to the right is positive, up is positive, left is negative, down is negative. Okay, so let's keep going now. We've got average versus instantaneous. Now we're gonna talk about velocity and speed because there's a difference there as well. Right, if you want velocity, that's the vector version. That means it's a total change in displacement over the total change in time. By contrast, average speed is the total distance traveled over the total change in time. So these are two equations right here. Uh, that are important to understand so you can at least see what the difference might be. So we'll talk about these uh, in more detail. I've got some examples to hopefully help it make sense. So let's do this one right here. We've got this graph of some sort of object. I don't care what object it is, but I know that uh, I have displacement here uh, or distance, right? It's not entirely clear from this right here. Um, and we've got time. It won't matter because here we want average speed. So remember, the difference between speed and velocity is just that speed is a scalar. So we just say the units and the distance, uh, so the, the magnitude of this vector. But with velocity, we have to say a direction. So in this case right here, we don't really care about the velocity. We're saying that what's the average speed? So all we gotta do is just, we care about the start to the finish. So in this question, what's the average speed from zero to A? I don't care the path that I took. All I care, on this graph at least, I don't care, I just care about what is the total, dis uh, well we want speed, right? So total distance divided by the total time. So let's look at this and see if we can figure this out. So what's the total distance traveled? Well, the total distance traveled is two. And the total time elapsed is two. Now do we have anything weird about the units? It's always important to look at that, but no, that's actually okay. So this is the distance, this is the time. So that means then the average speed, and then some, it, it depends how you want to write it, but I can say, for example, V A V G, you know, short for average. Well, it's going to be the total distance traveled, which is going to be two meters, divided by the total time elapsed, which is also two. Well, that's going to equal just one. So then I can say that the V average is just going to be one. And remember, it's meters per second. So I'll just say meters per second like this. There we go, I'm done. Now do you notice I've used something different? I use just S here instead of seconds. It's okay, you can use whichever one you like. So meters per second, whereas remember over here, I used meters and I said sec, it doesn't matter. Whatever is easiest for you. I think this is okay. So there we go, we've got one meter per second. That is your average speed. But now if we keep going then, what about instantaneous velocity? 
That's going to be important to understand here. So what do we mean by this here? Now there's instantaneous velocity. Of course, there's also instantaneous speed. So what do we mean by instantaneous? Like what's the difference between instantaneous and average? Well, instantaneous is at a specific time. So what I'm going to explain here, so I'll write it down maybe first, so at a specific time. So for example, for instantaneous velocity then, in this case it would be the, well, the change in, well if it's velocity, so it'll be the change in displacement over the change in time. That will be the instantaneous velocity. Now, what's the difference? Well, what you have to do, you have to look at your graph, and we don't care about the total, like we don't care about the total displacement divided by the total time, because that would have been the average speed, in this case here we're asking for speed, uh, we're caring about this time the instantaneous. What that means is you have to look at a specific point. And what you have to do then is draw yourself a tangent line and then figure out what to do from there. So let me attempt to do that here. I'm not sure how it's going to look here, if it's going to be perfect, but let's just try. So if I look at this right here, at this point A, what's happening? Well, I'm going to have to draw myself a tangent line, so I'll attempt to do it. So something like that something like that okay so now let's take a look at this and see if we can figure out anything that uh, goes on here on this graph so this one right here um, with the way I've drawn it at least this is my tangent line here well let's see now my instantaneous speed then is going to be maybe I'll write it in black here so my speed and I'll maybe say I N S T so V instantaneous, and remember we want speed instead of velocity. If it was instantaneous speed, we would just say the change in uh, distance over time. If we wanted instantaneous velocity, it's the vector, so we just say the change in displacement over time. We're basically doing the gradient. If you remember that uh, from math class right here, we're really just finding the gradient here. Okay, so that's the key thing here. What we're doing here with instantaneous is we're finding the gradient. That's the key. Instantaneous means gradient. So gradient of the tangent, of course, at that point. So if we look at this one right here, then, well, what's going on? Well, I can take a look at this then and try to draw myself some little uh, dots here. So let's see. So what's going on here? Well, it's kind of like zero, zero here. So that's actually okay. And I need a, maybe I'll use something wider. So maybe, for example, up here, do you notice this one right here? And maybe this one right here. Do you see that kind of matches? I mean, I've drawn it kind of poorly, but I hope you understand I like this, something like this. Do you notice then I can use this point here and I can use this point here to do it? So this one right here, then the instantaneous speed is going to be just the change in uh, distance here over the change in time. So in this case, let's just do it. So the change in distance, it goes from 4 to 0. So I can say 4 minus 0. Divide that by the total time. Well, it's 2 minus 0. You have to think of, of course, the gradient is upwards, so that's fine, right? Because as you go to the right, it goes up. So, all right, so if I do this right here, it's just 4 over 2, and that's just equal to 2. So then I can say the instantaneous speed, then, is just going to be, in this case right here, uh, 2 meters per second. Now, is it possible that your instantaneous speed is different than your average speed? Absolutely. In this case, I think it turned out to be, uh, it would be the same, right? Because the average speed right here would be the total distance traveled, uh, sorry, from right here, from this point right here. So in this case right here, the instantaneous speed would be same as the average speed. But what if this graph was doing something different? What if the graph was, you know, curved differently at that exact point? Well, then the instantaneous speed could easily be different than the average speed. All right, so last but not least, I've just got two equations for you. And by the way, I like this because when we have acceleration, we're going to use something very similar. Look at this, normal people steering, brake, gas for a car, physicist, accelerator, accelerator, and accelerator. Why is that funny? Because, well, all of these cause an acceleration, right? So I thought it was cute. All right, so we look at this one right here then. We've got average acceleration. Okay, so we say it's the total change in velocity over the total change in time. So if you're understanding what we did before, Average acceleration is just that. It's the yeah, total change. Now, what's the instantaneous? That's just going to be the, uh, again, just like we did before, instantaneous is the gradient. So maybe I'll write that down again. So I'll say that. What does that mean? It means the gradient. That's the key piece here that we need to understand. So what would that mean in this case? It would be then just delta something over delta time. And what is it this time? It's V. 
Now, do you notice we don't have an acceleration that's not a vector? That's the interesting part about that one, right? So we don't have a, uh, one of these. But this one here, I'm going to put it in a blue box as well. But there we go. So these are key concepts that are important. So you can see in this video then what we've done, we've gone over distance and displacement, vectors versus scalars. We've talked about how we draw little arrows on top. And we've looked at average versus instantaneous. We've done speed, velocity, and acceleration.